after a month of being cooped up in our homes, I think folks are ready for life to get back to normal, or at least they're ready to be able to venture out of our homes uh, to discover what the new normal is going to look like. And as much as I long too for that to happen, I also find myself fearing things getting back to normal. My prayer is that our new normal will be about more than simply washing our hands for an extended amount of time and, and keeping what's known now as an acceptable social distance from one another. My prayer is that our new normal will be about slowing down, making our relationship with God our main priority. And, and not just while we're waiting for the quarantine to be lifted, but my prayer is that this become our new norm for the rest of our lives. God desires nothing more than for us to be in an intimate relationship with him. That's what he longs for. Nothing in the world matters more than for us to fully embrace that we indeed are God's beloved and that God is the lover of our souls. God is calling each of us to go deeper in our relationship with him, living in that the reality that we're each God's beloved. And, and sometimes that doesn't come naturally. It's a spiritual journey, and frankly, sometimes it's easier to get bogged down in our busyness of life and simply not give God our full attention. And then something happens, like COVID-19, or maybe it's cancer or some other illness, and all of a sudden, God's got our attention, and we're ready to focus on what really matters. My question for you this morning is, how has God used the past 30 days to call you into a deeper relationship with him? If that hasn't happened, then excuse me if I'm offensive, but I need to suggest maybe you're still not making your relationship with God the priority that it's meant to be. Now, I'm in no way implying that God caused the coronavirus to get our attention. That would be unthinkable an unthinkable thing to even suggest with people dying and people being very ill. But that bad being said, I do feel that God can use this time to get our attention and to bring us closer to him. The Old Testament is a wonderful resource for us, and it's important to know that its value isn't just simply in its historical reference of God's chosen people, but it's also important because of the life lessons it contains. I want to share with you now a reading from Deuteronomy chapter 8, now beginning in verse 6. Just listen now, because I'm going to be reading from the modern translation of the Bible called The Message. And later in this week, I hope that you'll open up again to Deuteronomy 8 in whatever translation you have, and I hope that then you'll read it for yourselves. The reason sometimes I select the message is because the modern translation, using words I'm familiar with, well, it reminds me that these historical lessons do indeed have relevance for us today. So listen to Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning in the 6th verse. So it's paramount that you keep the commandments of God, your God. Walk down the roads he shows you and reverently respect him. Now verse 8 reminds us, after a meal and you're satisfied, bless God, your God, for the good land he has given you. And we're told once again in verse 11 to make sure we never forget God and that we never stop keeping his commandments and rules and regulations. That we must make sure we don't become so full of ourselves and our things that we forget who God is. God, our God, who is the God who delivered us from Egyptian slavery. The God who led us through the huge and fearsome wilderness those desolate, arid badlands crawling with fiery snakes and scorpions. Ooh. The God who gave us water gushing from a hard rock. The God who gave us manna to eat in the wilderness, something our ancestors had never heard of. And why did God do this? Here's what it says in Deuteronomy. God did this in order to give us a taste of the hard life, to test us so that we would be prepared to live well in the days ahead of us. I would add to that list of who God is, is that God is the same God who will deliver us from COVID-19. Then we're told, beginning in verse 17, if we start thinking of ourselves, I did all this all by myself, I'm rich, it's all mine, well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all, his, all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant 
that he promised to our ancestors as it is today. Goes on in verse 19 to say, if you forget, forget God, your God, and start taking up with other gods, serving and worshiping them, the writer says, I'm on record right now as giving you this firm warning. That will be the end of you. I mean it, destruction. You'll go to your doom, the same as the nations God is destroying before you. Doom because you wouldn't obey the voice of your God. Wow, <laughs> what an intense warning. Throughout the, whole, the entire Old Testament, God repeatedly used hardship in nature to get people's attention. He used food when he rained down manna and quail from heaven, as we were reminded in that Deuteronomy 8 reading. It was an opportunity for people to become more aware of their dependence on God. Has God used food to get your attention in the past month? Sure has mine. I can honestly say that I've never been so intentional and thankful for the food that I've prepared. Since going to the grocery store has been my only uh, exposure to the public over the past month, I've gone as few times as possible. And I've learned to be thankful for what was in my pantry. I learned to cook without the luxury of running to the store. I planned our meals like never before. And because our meals weren't rushed, I also appreciated every bite more than normal. Meals no longer were something that I fit into our busy schedule, but rather they became the focus of our, our day. It was a time when we were enjoying and thankful for God's provision. Yeah, I guess God has used food to get my attention. Maybe it wasn't quail and manna falling down from heaven, but it did the, do the purpose of making me more thankful for the bounty of God's provision. Another thing that God often used in the Old Testament was nature. Sometimes it was rain, like in the case of Noah. Sometimes it was fire, like in the case of Elijah. Has God used nature to speak to you over this past month? How about the snow in April or the rains that seemed like they'd never end? Were you able to get out and walk and enjoy God's presence through the call of the birds or the rustling of the wind? When you couldn't do anything else socially, did you get to a park or at least get outside? What about through the beauty of the spring flowers and the hope and promise that they represent? How about watching the birds build their nests? Yeah, I think God did use nature to draw us closer to him, both in the Old Testament and today. Throughout history, God's request has been consistent and yet simple. Spend more time with me. I was amazed when I learned that the 40 year trip that it took the Israels to get to the Israelites to get to the promised land should have only taken 11 days. Why did an 11 day trip take 40 years? Because the Israelites were so focused on their own goals and their own problems that they forgot God. God referenced them as a stiff necked people. What makes someone stiff necked? It's a failure to look up to God, and it's a failure to look down in humbleness, and it's a failure to look from side to side to see who needs your help. A stiff-necked person only looks forward to where they are going. Hmm. This time of quarantine is a perfect time for us to remember our rich history contained in the Old Testament. It's also a perfect time for us to look back on how God has provided for us in the past. We need to remember to look up, friends, and to look down in humbleness, and to look from side to side to see who it is we should be encouraging. Oh, yes, like you, I long for some things to get back to normal. I miss my kids, and I miss my grandkids. I miss worshiping together in our sanctuary. But I just don't want us to get back on the treadmills of our life and forget to make our relationship with God our number one priority. We keep hearing about the new norm. What's the new norm going to look like for you? What will you add to your life or take away from your daily schedule? What will you do differently when the all clear light comes on and we're ready to re-enter the mainstream? The time to ask is now. Will your new norm include starting your day in prayer? 
Will it include scheduling time every day to be reading scripture? Will you end each day with a holy examine where you stop and ask yourself where you experience God this day and, and where you maybe lost sight of him? Will your new norm be a call to spend more time in silence, simply listening to God? God is calling each of us to go deeper in our walk with him. Make good use of this time. Be open to going where God leads you. On Easter Sunday, I reminded each of us of God's call to Adam and Eve in the garden. Where are you? God calls out to them. He's still calling out. Where are you? Oh, how he longs for us to answer, here I am, Lord. Be still and know that God is God and that you indeed are God's beloved. Go in peace. Amen.